Welcome back to Randy's DIY, guys. I'm going to update you on the waste oil heater that I built uh, a couple of years ago. Here we are. It's uh, sitting right here behind me. We've got lots of upgrades on it. This is version 3.0. I've added a lot of heat exchangers. I've added door and reinforcement, door seal, door latch. I've added more air holes in the uh, intake hat that you guys have seen in my previous videos. As far as everything else goes, it looks like it's pretty much the same, but uh, stay tuned and see how this thing performs. It is amazing how much better it works than it did before. And I think it's just all those things put together, the door being sealed, the extra air holes in the air hat for the better combustion in, inside, more air, leaner, leaner burn inside the burn chamber. Stay tuned, watch the video. Like, subscribe, comment. I do my best to answer comments every day, multiple times each day. So I thank you all for watching my videos, and here we go. Okay, welcome back to Randy's DIY, and uh, we are adding some more heat exchanger tubes in here. I've had a lot of comments from you guys about maybe sloping the tubes, angling the, those tubes so they would have a natural draft you know, heat rises so it would pull air from the back side, but it's only 15 inches from the front to the back of the pipe, and I don't know how much draft would get with a 15 inch pipe, so I'm just going to leave them straight. I'm going to run them straight through the can here and uh, weld them on the front and the back, and I'm going to leave my little blower uh, on the back of it. That way I can blow heat directly onto the area that I'm going to be working in instead of it, you know, raising to the top. If it, you know, if it did have the natural draft convection whatever you call it to uh, flow the air through the heat exchanger tubes I'm pointing all the heat up which heat rises anyway so I would rather try to keep some of the heat down low and let it rise uh, otherwise I just have to turn my ceiling fans on and push it back down anyway the way I've done this I got a mark right here you can barely see it but that's the center of the tank and I just, I've got this set on uh, three and a half inches so, go to center to center, drill my hole. First thing I did is I extended my drill bit out uh, a long ways. That way I could drill through the tank. Now, I don't want the hole going this way or the pipe would have to go through the tank that way. So, I'm going to angle my drill like this. And we're going to cut this center section of the tank first and then cut the outer section as the hole saw goes through the tank. It's going to make a lot of noise. I'm going to record some of it and then you guys won't see all of it. But... Here we go. So I'm going to put my drill on low speed, give it a little cutting fluid. Now by drilling the hole through this curved tank at an angle, you can see that this hole is no longer round, but it will fit the pipe perfect going through to the back side. I'm going to go to the back side. I'm going to measure these holes, drill them all the same way. All right, let's get some, uh, let's get these guys welded on here and get some, uh, Okay guys, here we are. I am, I've got my temperature gun set on Fahrenheit. Uh, for you guys that want Celsius, I'll probably flip it back and forth. Just so we get both people happy. Uh, man, I've gotten so many comments on why I do Celsius, why I do Fahrenheit. I, you know, I don't know. Some people like Fahrenheit, some people like Celsius. That's why. I, I don't know. Here, we do Fahrenheit. But who cares? It's a temperature gasoline mixture gas careful gasoline i don't have any gasoline mixture to help this thing light up so it's going to take a little while to light it but i promise you it's going to get hot fast so here we go we're going to put in a little bit of it vegetable oil it's it's vegetable oil all natural i uh, couldn't tell you if it was grown without chemicals or not but it's vegetable oil we're going to burn it so here we go uh we got a little bit in there let's see if it light. Yeah, 
kind of burning actually started up better than I thought it would. I may have a little something mixed in with it. Let's slow it down a little bit. And close. Oh, yeah. Let's open our bent door. And let's, let's see if we can hear it. I mean, it's, it's only burning halfway around the pot now, but let's see if we can make, make a difference in the noise. Here we go. Oh, yeah. So this thing's going to get so hot, I won't be able to touch this clamp here shortly. But you can see, fixed. No more leaks. No more, uh, no more fire that you can see around the door. Uh, that's all solved. And it really increased the performance of the stove, forcing all that air up through the, the bottom the way it's supposed to be. Uh, come in instead of seeping around the door and man you can hear it it is it's really going that's Fahrenheit 500 degrees Celsius 233 move up here 620 degrees 630 635 656 660 you can see how hot this thing is getting I mean it it's unbelievable how much better it performs with the door sealed and the extra air holes in the air hat. So we're running a leaner mixture. We're up to 700, 800 degrees. We're up to 800 degrees already. And we're running on this little tiny stream of vegetable oil. Almost, now we're down to a drip. That's a drip about every probably a little a drip a little more than every second and we're still at 750 degrees let's, let's speed it up a little all right so there we got a we got a stream going now uh, back to that you know probably pencil lead size it was down to 670 now we're going back up 700 so you can see this thing gets hot so fast now it's crazy. I'm going to take this uh, video outside and we're going to take a look at the smoke from the chimney. Be right back guys. Right so there is the smoke output. It is a tiny bit. It's not nearly as much smoke as what you would see off of burning wood. But there is the smoke output, and that is vegetable oil burning. All right, guys, let's go back in. Right, let's go ahead and shut this thing down. We'll take some temperatures one last time. We are running at 730 degrees. And just for kicks, let's put some fuel in it and see how well it goes. All right, here we go. There it goes. All right, I just dumped quite a bit of fuel. Listen to that. Let's see what's happening to the temperatures. 811, 824, 834, 836, 840, 850, 860. I mean, you can see it'll, it'll climb, it'll get red hot. I mean, it, and it's just so fast. It's so responsive now that we have more air input. So we're up to uh, 890 degrees now. I'm going to shut this thing down because it's really kind of burning this close to it. So there we go. I'm turning the oil off. And we're going to let her finish shutting down. The heat exchanger pipes work great when I put the squirrel cage with a fan behind them. And, uh, the heater is just performing beyond anything I could ever imagine. The, the smoke that's coming off of it now is because I put some some paint on it. Yeah, it'll burn off over time. I, I thought the header paint might stay, but you can see it's already cooking it off, turning it white. Okay, guys. That's it. That's vegetable oil in my waste heater with uh, modifications. Waste oil heater version 3.0. If you enjoyed the video... Uh, if you learned anything, if, if, whatever, comment, like, subscribe, please subscribe. 
got more things coming I haven't done a video on the uh, heater in a long time so I thought it was time to show you guys the upgrades and how it works bye guys thank you for watching